How's it going boys and girls and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be installing my ARB air compressor into that under tray toolbox. Here are all the parts we'll be using, or well, most of the parts. Let's start with the ARB air compressor. I really like this compressor. I've had it for about six months now. It is the fastest one I've ever owned and combined with this four liter tank. Um, I could probably pump up all four 34 inch tires in just a few minutes. This is their portable compressor system, uh, which has a, the maximum output twin compressor uh, with the tank, uh, with the fuses, with the relays, with the switches, um, and these alligator clamps for the battery terminals. All inside this pretty cool ARB cargo box. It has all the fuses and some of the airlines in there, so hopefully um, I can reuse them uh, in the under tray toolboxes. Uh, but I've also gone and got myself some uh, bulkheads from Pertec. Uh, and just some hoses and fittings from ARB just to make the installation a little bit neater. So the max total draw of these two compressors together um, is 68.6 .6 amps. So I've paired this up with a 100 amp circuit breaker um, and a lot of cable, I bought a whole roll of cable from Repco. This is a 6BNS cable because we're gonna be running uh, the wiring all the way from uh, this side of the tray to the main battery. I'm also upgrading the air tank to this six liter hot dog um, air tank from Boss Suspension so we can squeeze it in uh, between the toolbox which would mount here um, and also the chassis rail. At this point in time I've already removed the under tray toolbox and rerouted my diesel filler hose um, on the 79 with the normal tray. The diesel filler neck runs uh, in front of these tray mounts and into the tank. Um, so I've had to reroute this just behind that way. Um, and the way I did this was I bought an additional hose. This is a 90 degree hose from Mackay. I'll put it up in the video. Um, and you can reuse the existing pipe work uh, to make it fit. We're gonna be mounting the compressor inside this toolbox with the air tank directly behind it. Personally, I don't believe in putting air compressors inside vehicles unless you absolutely have to. Especially in a ute, you have plenty of other options. The air compressors build heat, uh, they have condensation, and also they're really noisy when they're running. Um, another option is actually the engine bay of the car, which a lot of people do, but it's also a harsh environment and it can get pretty hot there sometimes. So in my opinion, especially for a ute, the best location for an air compressor is either inside the canopy or in a sealed toolbox. So the first thing we're gonna do is disassemble this kit so we can work out how we're gonna mount it inside the toolbox. So just getting back into it tonight and earlier this afternoon you may have seen I kind of jumped the gun and went and marked out where we're going to be putting the compressor bracket which is a little bracket sitting under there and we're going to be using that to refit this compressor into that toolbox. I just wanted to take a minute to show you guys everything which comes with this portable kit because I really do think that having the full kit here is just making my installation a whole lot easier. Um, yeah, so we've got the twin compressor here which is powered through this wiring harness goes through these two 40 amp maxi fuses to the alligator clamps and this goes onto your battery. This compressor is controlled through this plug uh, into the back of this ARB toggle switch. So yeah, really neat. I really like having these plugs. It just makes the wiring a whole lot neater. So when the compressor's on, it pumps um, air through into this ARB four liter air tank and there's a pressure switch on the compressor uh, which will shut it off when this reaches a certain pressure. So from this side of the tank, air runs through this hose to the back of this outlet. You know, you can put a few different accessories on there. So the tie inflator, of course, and also comes with a little air gun, compressed air gun. So that's gonna be very useful, especially at the beach. I do recommend the full kit, um, but otherwise, uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of what you're gonna need. All right, so next I'm gonna take the mounting bracket off and we're gonna use that as a template to drill some holes. So I've got the mounting bracket held in there by just that one bolt. Um, because the riv nut's actually pretty tall, um, you're not able to mark it with a permanent marker. So I got a little drill bit and just made a little pilot hole 
to really rivet up, just be careful not to mess up the threads. And all we gotta do now is just drill out the remainder holes. Okay, so I got my mounting bracket on. So last night we mock fitted the compressor inside this toolbox and at the moment it's just held in there by a couple volts and we have to work out where we're going to put the air fittings, um, the bulkhead and the wiring loom. But before we can do that we need to sort out how we're going to fit this behind that toolbox. Um, so off camera I've already gone ahead and worked out how we're going to fit it but this Boss Suspension 6 litre air tank comes with these brackets, um, they're pretty good brackets but there just simply isn't enough room behind there. Um, so what I've done, uh, I'm gonna show you guys, I've decided to mount it straight to the, the tray. There's a uni strut channel which runs down the length of the tray, the same channel that the toolbox mounts to. So what we're gonna do is use a couple of channel nuts um, to mount the air tank there. So as I mentioned before, these are the roller um, pipe clamps, the bazooka clamps, and because they suit a 100 millimeter internal diameter PVC pipe, it's actually not going to fit snug over this air tank. So what I've done is added some insulation. This is some, um, I think it's EPDM rubber from Bunnings, um, and it's you know, it's really sturdy, um, and also it'll help with any vibrations on the tank. I've also added this aluminium L bracket. They're three mil thick. Just got them from Bunnings, and the reason I've had to add an extra piece of aluminium is because the length of this bracket just doesn't sit enough onto the channel nut rail. So yeah, otherwise it mounts up really well. So I'm going to get the tank and the toolbox into the car and then we can figure out what to do next. So I've got everything mounted up and I've also found where I'm going to put these fittings. So the reason I'm using these fittings is I'm trying to make this toolbox as water sealed as possible. So it's probably not going to be watertight, but it's going to be pretty close. The only time I think water might get through is through this cable gland. Um, but that said, it's pretty sealed and it's also out of the way. Starting with this ARB outlet. Now this fitting can be flush mounted. So what I'm going to do is punch a hole through there. Uh, put this through, put a rubber seal in the end and also a nut. I'm going to put that right up there in the corner, pretty accessible and still out of the way. Next we have this JIC-4 stainless steel bulkhead and this will go between the compressor uh, and the tank and I'm probably going to mount that right over there in the corner or up there um, depending if the hose will reach. And lastly this is a 25mm cable gland and we're going to be mounting that sucked up out of the way up here um, it's going to be sitting under the tray, so out of the weather. Um, and I'm planning also to hide all the wiring in this corner here. And I'm also going to bolt in a little switch panel for that on off switch. Outlets there, bulkheads there, and the cable gland sitting up here. Pretty easy to do. And I guess now we're going to refit the compressor. But before I go ahead and do that, I just want to show you guys um, I am using the 30 centimeter air hose from ARB with the 90 degree fitting. When I took the fittings off, it looks like they've used thread paste just on the threads there. So what I'm going to do is clean it up and then get the fittings back on um, and then put the compressor back into the box. All right, it's starting to come together. Managed to fit the air hose on top of the compressor, straight into that bulkhead. That's the other side of it. Got my cable gland up here and the tray sits on top, so it's covered from rain. 
uh, and hopefully water ingress. So yeah, it's really coming together. And I think now what we're gonna do is feed the wiring loom through the cable gland. But first of all, so this is the wiring loom which supplies power to the compressor. So what we're gonna do is thread this wiring loom through the cable gland. Um, but first of all, I'm gonna show you guys how to depin this connector. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward, but I know wiring does intimidate a few people. So we're gonna do this in detail. Um, first of all, we're gonna remove this black retaining clip off the connector. And the way we do that is by prying the sides of it up. Like that on both sides. And this black retaining clip should just pop right off. So now we've unlocked this connector, you might be able to see that each slot is labeled A, B, C, D, E. And I've just got a permanent marker and just marked the same. What I'm gonna do now is unlock the individual pins to pull each wire out. You can see here, there are five terminals and there are little holes here at the bottom of each terminal. Um, so this is a pin removal tool, I think it's called, and you're probably gonna need one to unlock these pins. So what I'm gonna do is get my tool and push down until you hear a click and you should be able to pull that pin out just like that and repeat for the other four. So that's all five pins out of the connector. And I think I should clarify the motion of unlocking these pins. So when you get your tool in there, just get it inside the slot and then you're gonna actually pry and lift up onto that pin. And what that does is actually releases this little metal contact, which locks the terminal into the connector. All right, so just take your cable gland cap off and thread the wires through that cap and then next, you're gonna do the fun part. And just squeeze it through that gland. I'm going in. I'm pretty glad I didn't go for a smaller gland. This is probably perfect. I'm just gonna pull it through. All right, so we're just gonna put this connector back on. So just don't forget to pry back up on these tabs. So it locks the pins back in place. Don't forget to match those letters. Just gonna do one at a time. Click, click, there we go. Put the retaining clip back on. And that's it. Now you've got the desired length inside the toolbox. We're gonna to tighten this cable gland and you're gonna see a little rubber seal inside. As you tighten this gland down, it's gonna squeeze onto that wiring loom. Not sure if you can see it. There we go. So I'm just gonna tighten it, just a moderate amount of tightness. There we go. And as you can see, that seal is pretty good. We're kind of on the home stretch now with the toolbox and just off camera, I went and made myself a little switch panel. It was really hard deciding where to mount the fuse. Um, initially, I wanted to tuck it away kind of under here or like on the side in the corner there. Um, but I ended up making a switch panel, just a simple one. Um, I had this piece of stainless lying around and uh, this just sits here in the corner like that. Just, just lining it up. Yeah, just like that. And um, yeah, I decided to leave this top part open. I thought about adding maybe some sort of 12 volt outlet just right there. Something that I could tap into my mains battery uh, through the existing wiring. And I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but generally with the driver's side, I do use it as wet storage. So my, my shower stuff, um, hoses, that kind of thing. So perhaps I could run uh, my shower off this as well. So I'm just gonna leave it blank for now and we'll add something to it later. I just wanted to show you this part, another good reason to buy the portable kit when doing this. It comes with all the plugs and all the wiring. So I'm just gonna plug it into the existing loom. Is that plug there? And then just tuck it away. Um, I also wanted to show the rubber seals I'm using. Um, this is the packet I got from Bunnings. It comes in a pack of 50. These are for M6 bolts. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just getting a bolt, putting the rubber seal there, through the box and I've got a nut on the end of it. So yeah, that should be enough to keep everything nice and sealed. That's how I've bolted it in, three bolts, but they're all hidden away out of sight underneath the toolbox lid. So the next thing we're gonna do 
We're going to test it. This is my spare battery I always keep here. There we go. The ARB switch is illuminated. Um, it's definitely working. Now I know the wiring's all sweet. The last thing I'm going to do with the whole toolbox before it's ready to go back in the car is to convert these alligator clips to an Anderson plug. Just remember that this is from the portable kit. So if you remember, we tucked the wiring loom through the cable gland and routed it into the toolbox. And you got these two alligator clamps which go through two 40 amp maxi fuses. We're gonna keep these two in line and all we're gonna do is replace these clips with an Anderson plug. These are the Anderson plugs that we're gonna be using for the circuit. Um, it's a bit bigger than the standard one, which most of us know pretty well. This is a 50 amp Addison plug and this one's rated to 120 amps. Good for a 6 BNS cable. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to prepare one of these Addison plugs. I should do that in an earlier video so feel free to check it out. But I'm also going to do something a bit differently. Um, I'm not going to use the old faithful crimper. I'm going to please the, the other side and flood solder these terminals. My first two flood solder joints turn out pretty good. It's actually easier than I thought. Click, click, and that's it. So the toolbox is all ready for tomorrow, ready to go back into the car. Just love how, how neat it's come out. Oh yeah. I don't always do them that neat. <laughs> the last thing we're going to do tonight is prep the tank, ready to go back in the car. I've got a couple fittings here, um, but I just want to show you guys the Boss tank. So the Boss tank comes with two 3.8 inch MPT fittings on the end and a third outlet, a quarter inch MPT fitting. For this port, we're going to use this as a drain valve. Air tanks do build up condensation over time, so it's a good idea to have a drain in them. So I bought myself a little brass fitting. At both ends of the tank, we're gonna fit a reducing bush down to a quarter inch MPT. Uh, one end we're gonna use a 90 degree fitting and the other end just a straight fitting, all from ARB. It's a warm and windy day today and thankfully there's not much left to do. Um, the plan is just to install the toolbox and the air tank. I've got two hoses as well to install and then we're going to run wiring down the chassis rail through a circuit breaker to the main battery. And yeah hopefully that's all there is to it so let's get straight into it. Well, that went on pretty easy. And it's good to know it'll come off easy too. Just to show you guys the fitment behind the toolbox and the tank, there really isn't much in it at all. Got the measurements right. And yeah. Looking schmick. It's time to wire this thing up, the home stretch. 
and I actually haven't run cable down the length of a 79 before so uh, I'm planning to try to follow the trailer plug loom I think that goes straight to the engine bay um, but we'll just have to wait and see um, I'm not planning on showing this part it's pretty straightforward uh, but you know two cables to the battery with the positive side uh, we have a circuit breaker uh, in the engine bay it's a 100 amp circuit breaker anyways I'll get it sorted and I'll see you guys soon So the whole installation is complete and I am really happy with how it's turned out. So I've come out here to do a bit of a live demonstration of the air compressor. The wiring was pretty straightforward. I didn't end up running it down the driver's side. I ran it down the passenger side of the vehicle. So straight across the tow bar and then running the cable in line with the brake lines all the way down um, to the engine bay. I just found that the most straightforward and the neatest way uh, just to keep all the electrical components like the relay circuit breakers all on the passenger side of the engine bay. Now the compressor is mounted inside the toolbox. I've also got all this area I want to try to keep organized. So if you guys have any ideas let me know. I thought about putting the ARB organizer here um, but yeah let me know what you guys think. So actually the reason why we're out here is because I just didn't want to wake my neighbors up this early in the morning. I'm going to deflate this tire down to 18 psi and then we're going to inflate this as part of our test. So 18 psi, that's what I generally go to. All right, so I'm ready to do this test. I've deflated that driver's side front tire down to 18 psi and we're going to see how quick this air compressor and tank combo goes to pump it back up to 40 psi. Uh, now generally when I use the main battery, when I'm using a compressor off the main battery, I will press the idle up button. Uh, it keeps the voltage up and also the revs up to keep charging the main battery while we're draining from it as well. Uh, and the time starts when I open the door. I've got my little phone here, uh, so it's going to be my timer. Ready? And the time starts now. A minute 43 not too bad at all and that's including you know fumbling around getting the hose ready getting used to this new setup making up excuses uh, but yeah I'm really happy with that and the beauty of this setup is actually having that six liter air tank behind the compressor uh, because whilst we're moving on to the next tire the compressor is still pumping air into the tank ready to be used. I guess the only downside of having a setup like this is just filling up too quickly and then having to help your mates to fill up their tires too. Um, but I don't really see that as a downside. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed another one on the 79. If you're new to the channel and you like any of the content, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next video.